I just survived 1,000 days in my hardcore world, and in that time, I managed to trap every mob and bring them to the overworld. Everybody's here! Oh, I built this massive cherry blossom village, which gave me so many amazing things, including carpal tunnel from placing over 100,000 blocks. And finally, I obtained every possible armor trim in the game. So whether you want to watch someone suffer for hundreds of hours... No... I must have placed the wrong block. Or you just want to see how I literally became immortal in the game. Oh no! Here's my story of surviving 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. Now, to start, we're gonna trap every mob in the game and then fight them all at the exact same time. But you may be wondering, is it possible to bring the Ender Dragon to the overworld in survival mode? You see, the most common ways to transport mobs is through nether portals, but the game has made it so Ender Dragons don't go through portals and you can't even light one in the end anyway. And since the end portal doesn't light until you kill the dragon, there's no way to get it through there. And even if you did somehow light it, he ain't just gonna fly through it. Now, there might be a way to get the Ender Dragon into the overworld, but we have a lot more problems. Getting the warden into a coliseum with other mobs and having it not kill them all is going to be hard. Even if we pull that off, mobs like piglins can't exist in the overworld. And how we'd get all the water mobs and, I mean, to survive in a dry coliseum? Well, to figure that out, we should get started. First, I want an elytra to make building the coliseum a lot easier. Which means we need to get a few things first and beat the game. And it all starts with treasure hunting. You see, speedrunners use this technique to beat the game even quicker. Hey! Oh no, 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 no. Hmm. That went well. By looting ruined nether portals and shipwrecks, you can skip mining and the need for villagers early on. Ugh. Bingo. Hmm. Time to eradicate the locals. Oh, oh, ah. oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. New plan, new plan, new plan. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now that I have my armor and tools, it's time to get to the nether. By using lava and water, we can make a portal extremely fast. Ah, crap. <laughs> oh, it's coming through the portal. Whew, didn't make it. Now we need a... No, 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 you are not hitting me off. Uh, I can make that right. Go, go, go. Okay, so a bastion and a fortress will make the fastest way to get to the end here. Now, some may say this is a bad idea. I'm immediately lost. We need to find the gold in here to trade with the piglins for ender pearls, and then we can leave. But we need to avoid any brutes. Oh, it's a big boy. Place these and oh, oh no, big boy's coming. Run, 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 run. Okay, I have a dumb idea. Oh, there's two. <laughs> Give me them toes. Now we just need to get to the bottom and get the chests. Ah, crap. That was a lot of damage. Now, we have a problem. The second we open these chests, an army of piglins will murk us. But they have one fatal flaw, their eyes. If you build a wall around a bastion chest and then open it, their coating doesn't allow them to see through the wall. And when you leave, they act like nothing ever happened. So... Oh, this was totally worth it. Now we just need to get out of here alive. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. Who's hitting me now? Who's hitting me now? Oh my gosh. Um, who is shooting at me? Just gonna grab these up. No, no. Now, we just need to find some piglins to trade off our hard-earned gold. I have a hole for you. It's not what it looks like. It's a very nice hole. Now, piglins only have a 2.148% chance of dropping enderpearls, so this could take a while. Nobody gave me enderpearls? All right, let's see if you guys did better. And where's the hole I put them in? It's 12 enderpearls. And now, to get to the end, we need to find another fortress. But well, we aren't going to find it like some peasant would. We're going to use pie. No, not the yummy pie, though. The math pie. Opening up a special menu in Minecraft, we can track block entities. What we're looking for are blaze spawners. Now, using the advanced math you learned in grade 4, we can deduce it's 16 chunks in a direction. We just gotta figure out what direction. Using our render distance, we can increase or decrease our eyesight. Oh, that's really bright. Ha, it's gone. Just like my girlfriend. <laughs> Forever. Oh. Now that we've deduced it's between 15 and 16 chunks, we just gotta walk into a new chunk until it reappears. And bam! It's that way. Go, 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 go. And there she is. <laughs> Not my girlfriend. Uh, she's still gone. But, um, the fortress. Ha! <laughs> Can't light me on fire. Oh, oh, you can hit me, though. You can hit me. Okay, that's a lot of damage. All 
right, we got our blaze rod. So now we just need to head back to the overworld and get a couple more things and then go right to the end. And now to find the stronghold. To make this a bit quicker, we can use what the best speedrunners in Minecraft are using. Trigonometry. <laughs> It sounded cooler in my head. By throwing an eye of ender and recording an angle of 89 degrees, then turning 90 degrees and throwing it again, we get an angle of 87 degrees. Now I can already hear you. Why is he doing math? Well, suck it, because I just figured out the stronghold is roughly 500 blocks that way using this chart. So I'm going to run 62 blocks in the nether and I should be roughly there. Oh. Oh, I, I literally almost mined right by that. I didn't even notice. <laughs> All right, we found the portal. But before we go in, we need to get one more thing. You see, elytras are found in end cities, and those are thousands of blocks away. And since walking is for peasants and people who want to fall into the void, I'm going to make a flying machine. But to do that, we need to get some slimes before we go in there. Okay, we just need a bow. All right, let's head into the end. Now, let's remove this big boy from existence. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't think you were. Oh. Ooh. I'm gonna kill this entire thing. Oh. Ah! What hit me? What hit me? Oh, no. Ah! Don't you dare fly away. No. Don't. I just. I s said don't do it. <clears throat> Flawless. Now, you might be wondering, how am I supposed to trap the Ender Dragon and bring it to the Urval world if she's dead? Well, I'll respawn her, you silly goose. But now it's time to get the Elytra. And for that, we have the Flying Machine 6000! <laughs> This thing's literally a death trap. Now, there's no way to ride my magnificent machine, so I've come up with my own way. <laughs> this has a, a high chance of not going well. Go, 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 get in the boat. <gasps> I'm a genius. I never doubted for one second. <laughs> this has a, a high chance of not going well. Ah, end city spotted. Now to greet the locals. Gifts for me? There she is, boys, the elytra. And we'll just take this while we're here. Now we just have to go through. Oh, I don't want my elytra on. Oh! Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. All right, with stage one out of three done, it's time to start stage two, the Colosseum. First, we need to find 0, zero in the overworld. This will be important for trapping the Ender Dragon a bit later. Now, I don't want to build some shrimpy Colosseum. I want something to rival that of even Rome's mighty Colosseum. <laughs> There's just one small problem. I have no idea how to build one. So with the lack of knowledge, I spent the next six hours researching and plotting a build. Once I had a rough diagram, I started construction. <laughs> or, or I would have, except um, it's it requires over 433,894 blocks. And um, I'm slightly broke. Yeah, nope, I ain't modding this. So, stage one, we're gonna need to collect the resources to make a machine that'll do the work for us. Ouch. And now we can construct cobblestone generator. You thought I was gonna do the cobblestone generator 8,000 thing? <laughs> no, no, no. Anyway, the TNT duper will drop TNT into the circle of lava and water, creating an explosion. But the blocks here are all waterlogged, so only the cobblestone will break, creating a river of yummy stone. Now, we could AFK here for a few hours to get enough for the Colosseum. Or, or, hear me out. We go mining for four hours to get stacks of redstone and iron, spend six hours building three of them and remarkably not messing up at all, and then relish in the riches. <laughs> <laughs> Cobblestone. Yeah, that wasn't painful at all. Also, I trapped two trader llamas as we'll need them later. I didn't get the wandering trader. He, um, he didn't make it. Pretty sick build, eh? Hey! Now that we have a bunch of stone going, we need to trap a warden. Hear me out. Trapping every mob is one thing, but keeping them from despawning is another. However, if we use a name tag on a mob, it won't despawn. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. And there's one place that name tags spawn more than anywhere. Ancient cities. Now, here's the plan. We go in and we smack the warden around a little. Put the lad in a cage with a toy to distract him. Build a machine to prevent future wardens from being birthed. And then loot the ancient cities for all their loot. <laughs> this won't go horribly wrong. Oh, gotta stay quiet. All right, and now we can begin the plan. Ooh, diamond hoe. We are gonna castrate the deep dark. <laughs> Wait, what? 
Nope. No, but but seriously. You see, according to the wiki, the warden will only spawn if something like this happens. Yo, bro, call the warden. The warden. No, Jerry. Bro, there's something there. Jerry, remember last time it was a rabbit. I see something, and it's not a rabbit. No, you don't. It's smacking me with a hoe. Now there's a key weakness here. When the shrieker gets the fourth signal from the skulk sensor, it'll spawn a warden. But a warden can only spawn if there are blocks nearby the sensor. And since only one shrieker can be activated at a time, if we can trick the sensor into repeating a signal to that shrieker, no warden will ever spawn again. Now before we castrate the deep dark, we need to catch a warden so we can bring him to the Colosseum later. And for that, we have the biggest brain play. I call it the piston in a box. <laughs> I'm going to die. Oh, 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 there he is. Good job doing the climbing. Come on, come on. Are you stuck? Oh, you're not stuck. That was a dirty lie. You're... Okay. Okay, come on. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. No! Oh! oh! Go! Oh, did... there's no way. Now we just need to collect some iron, make an anvil, and we name tag him to prevent him from despawning. Time to not eat me, aim you. I like how peaceful it looks. And now we're free to pillage the ancient city. Now before we leave, we need to start the machine. The sensor sends a signal down this chute. The shrieker will then attempt to spawn a warden, but since there is no ground close by, it cannot. This portal acts as a chunk loader, utilizing a dropping method I learned from El Mango. This will stop any warden from spawning in this deep dark biome or any other ancient city or biome around the world. All right, now we gotta get home and balance building the Colosseum and catching all the rest of the mobs. But since we're here, I'm stuck in the stupid snow. Oh no. Where's my goat? Where's my goat? Oh, he's suffocating. No, I killed Godekiss. Since I lost my goat, I did the only reasonable thing. I stole Godekiss's brother. <laughs> fly, Godekiss's brother, fly. Meet your new friends, Godekiss's brother. <laughs> that is until I make you all fly into the death. Name tagged. But enough fooling around. We need to start the Coliseum. First, we need to clear a huge chunk of land. You see, once we get all the mobs in here, fitting in the three bosses as well, will cause absolute havoc. And by my calculations, the only way to avoid the Ender Dragon and Warding mauling everyone in here is to make a Colosseum that's 210 by 210 blocks. Or in other words, the biggest Colosseum ever made in survival mode. Oh boy. Okay, that took way longer than I planned. <laughs> like eight hours longer. But I think we have a good foundation to build. Now... All right, four out of 85 mobs captured. I think the best way to approach a building of this size is to get the skeleton done first. So, building the foundation of this thing is actually pretty complex. You see, I have to make sure it's perfect according to my plans, because if it isn't, mobs won't have enough space when I trap them in here. And I mean, what if the Elder Guardian sees the Wither, or the Warden sees an Iron Golem, or the Ender Dragon sees a... Ah. We have run out of andesite, and um, this is a problem because the build's only like 10% done. So... The Colosseum requires 80,000 of these blocks. So if we want, we can come into the mines here and mine a bunch of the andesite up. Or... Or... Hear me out. I could fly over to the village and prison all the villagers in a deep hole, remove their livelihoods from existence, turn them into masons, steal their food and force them to breed, fly their neighbors and imprison them all. No! Oh shoot, I hit him. Don't let him tell the other villagers! No! Get back here! You know what? That works, actually. Yeah. You can just stand there. Heal all their food and force them to breed, then find 4,000 blocks the nearest jungle to find bamboo and a panda that won't let me take it home. Do you go on a lead? Aw, oh, no. Fly back home, spend three hours researching bamboo farm techniques, build a single layer bamboo farm with the servers and pistons, then spend two hours more to build three more layers, then double it, then triple it. If get the farm to turn the bamboo into sticks, fly back to the village I imprisoned earlier. Whee! Trade the sticks for the fletches for emeralds and trade the emeralds to the masons to get tons of anisite. <laughs> that is 11 hours of my life I will never get back. Now we can finish the skeleton of the build. All right, now that the base is done, I want to test something. To keep all the mobs so close together is going to be hard. They're all going to need their separate space. But when the time comes to fight, I'll need to release them all at once, so they have to be close together. Now, I just need a few mobs to test this idea <gasps> out with. Is he going to blow up if I go in the boat with him? Wait, are you mad at me? Yeah, you are! Okay, well, that didn't work. Now you can come over here. Good job! Yeah! Now, if I get him here... Oh, it'd be so much easier if I had him. Oh, well, that worked. Come on. Oh, no! Yes, 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 yes. Everything will be connected to one sign. Then, we'll break the sign. All the mobs will be released at once. And it'll be <laughs> such chaos. Now, before we begin stage three of the Coliseum, I want to bring the warden here.
<laughs> you see, it would be a real shame if I died trying to get one of the bosses here, so to prove I can do it before I put in all this work, I want to try and capture him. Now, some people have used the nether, built these large tunnels, and slowly brought him to their base. Why? Well, I ain't got time for that. So, I'm gonna do the more practical thing. I'm gonna make a giant cannon, stuff him in there, make a nuke's worth of TNT, and then launch him into the stratosphere where he'll sail 1,200 blocks, then slowly float down right into his prison cell. This is gonna work flawlessly. First, I have to grab and make a ton of supplies to construct the cannon. First, we gotta add some sweet sneak onto these leggings. And now that we have everything, it's time to fly off and actually build the cannon. This design was by an amazing redstoner called Salva, who promised me a 50% chance it would work. <laughs> oh no. With the cannon done, we need a pathway down to the deep dark, so... I'll explain how the cannon works when we get the warden in it, since, um, that may be kind of difficult. We need to get him, like, a hundred blocks upwards, and to do it, I have an amazing method. I call it the Noisemaker Warden Follower Trail Machines. <laughs> I'm gonna just place these all over the place and try not to die. Oh, I hate not being able to see. I can see him. I know he's not coming. <sighs> this is really stupid. What if I smack him? This is dumb. Go, go, go. He's dancing. <laughs> oh, the man's dancing. No idea where I'm running. Go, go, go. Oh, he's a coming. He's a coming. I'm just, I'm not stopping. Ooh, that's why. We skip a level. I think we go for beans, boys. He has a habit falling off of things. So we're going to need to build some guardrails here. How an idea this stupid is working. Go. Okay. Okay. He's doing his thing. Ooh, we need to fix that. He is standing on the ledge. This is not how I planned this going down. Okay, we gotta get this out of the way. Don't sniff me. Stop sniffing. I have no idea how I'm alive right now. Now, water. Water. Close it up. Close it up. Oh, fly away. Fly away. Where did he go? Did he walk off? He's in. He's in. I am a genius. I am the smartest man alive. Oh, ah! Ooh, okay, now it's time for launch. The cannon works on a very basic principle. By lowering my simulation distance, the TNT duper, similar to my cobblestone farm one, will infinitely generate, but since I'm too far away, it won't go off. Meaning, if we stack up the right amount of TNT, about 6,000, it will go off all at once when I get close and send this man straight into the stratosphere. The powdered snow in the dispenser acts as an aiming tool and using something called Lazy Excel, we can direct- Ooh, it's done. As soon as I extend my simulation distance to 32, it's gonna register all that TNT. Hey, look! Bees are frozen. The game is calculating how all that TNT. You know, this could blow up right in my face. Right now. And I'd be very dead. Okay, so he's about to get shot like 50,000. Oh, he's gone. Huh. Uh, how is he already here? Pause. So looking back at the footage, he literally disappeared instantly. He's in this frame, and then he's gone the next frame. Here, gone, here, gone, here, gone, here, gone, here. This man literally just broke the sound barrier. This is how fast Steve runs in Minecraft. In comparison, a horse runs about this fast. If Minecraft had cars, they would pass the horse quite easily. A rocket ship would destroy the car, but this is how fast the warden just went. It just traveled 1,200 blocks in 0 .001 second. Huh. All right, now time to place like 50,000 stone. One could say I'm at rock bottom <laughs> right now. Get it? Boo! Yeah, I, mean, I thought it was funny. Okay, we have a problem, and it's not just my jokes. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Oh, run, run. What just happened? What just happened? Why? I can't fly. I can't fly. Ah. See, we have an issue. I could add looting to my sword, kill some phantoms, repair it again. You know, go kill some creepers and get some gunpowder. He dropped literally nothing. Or, or, hear me out. We fill up our shuckles with cobblestone, fly to an open spot, realize we forgot something, fly back, craft a zillion trapdoors, build a one level mob farm, fall off. Oh! <laughs> fall off! Build ten more levels. Ah, crap. We need more trapdoors. Deforce a local landscape. Sorry, Greta. Plant a sapling, fly back home, craft a zillion more trapdoors, finish the creeper mob grinder at a killing and storage system, fly to a nearby village and slave the- hmm. Ah, uh, come on. Find the villagers have enslaved themselves. Oh, well, uh, this is really convenient. <laughs> Find out I have fewer morals than a cat. You think you can hang out with the cool villagers, eh? Not a chance. Just gonna... Oh, just gonna... Whoop. Turn them all into a library and spend like ten... Oh, you... Oh, oh, I got it the first try. I got it the first try. All right, now I must protect them. All right, I'm out of dirt, um... I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> fly, walk back home, make a billion sticks, and then fly. Hey, I don't 
I don't walk all the way over there. Pig, carry me. Walk up a mountain and trade for emeralds. Walk all the way back. Get the menu book, add to my elytra, craft a billion rockets, and fly again. And we can fly again. <laughs> oh, right. I gotta build a giant coliseum and trap 90 more mobs. <clears throat> Right, I should get back to that probably. <laughs> Before trapping a lot of the mobs, I began work on the main structure of the Colosseum, raising the walls to around the height they're gonna be at when it's finished. All right, we're at like 75% now. Ouch. Now we need to get to trapping some mobs. I think I'll start with the passive ones as they seem to be the easiest, but before we do that, we actually need some name tags. So... Huh, I got like 20 notch apples from that. All right, time to get some prisoners. Pets, pets. They are pets. <clears throat> oh, our first member. <laughs> go in the hole. Go in the hole. Ah, <laughs> the warden has a friend now. You have a big nose. Heh, <laughs> frogge. Huh, what? No, 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 no. With about half the passive mobs now acquired, I need to begin expanding the cages. <clears throat> houses. Little houses for the pets. All right, so we form this little perimeter around the entire sort of mob cage area, and that's for the water mobs. This way, when everything gets released, the water's going to push everything into the middle. Now, I thought the passive mobs would be the easiest to collect, but little did I know, one of the hardest mobs in the entire game was in the passive mob category, the squid. Man, just walking my squid. But uh, we'll find out here in a second. Yeah, so how do we get you up? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, shoot. Oh, um, back in the water. Oh no! No, oh, Squidward! Yeah, stay in the water. Oh! I hate my life. Can a mushroom fly is the question I would like to know. The answer is no. No, they cannot. It, it looks like he's trying to attack me. Oh yeah, yeah, dance, dance. I don't know what it's- Ow! He's attacking! This is ethical. This is 100% ethical. Steal the children! I mean, you Billy too. Now, with nearly all the passive mobs captured, we need to figure out one of the hardest parts of this, the nether mobs. You see, we need to get the nether mobs into the overworld, but there's a problem. Piglins and hoglins cannot exist in the overworld. If we bring them here, then they're gonna convert into zombie pigmen and zoglins. But it wouldn't be a battle of all the mobs if we didn't have them here. So I think I have an idea. But first, we need to make a giant portal right above where the ender dragon's gonna be. <laughs> Don't know we're gonna get him here. Right. I forgot to put this guy here. Now we just need to capture all the nether mobs. <laughs> There's only like eight, so how hard can it be? Ooh, that's the wrong idea. Wrong idea. Yeah, okay, we got him in, we got him in. Go, 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 go. Oh, he doesn't go in minecarts. Run! You're too big to fit in here, aren't you? Oh, no, you're not. Perfect. Hey, give me back my minecart. <laughs> Nothing happened. He's <gasps> in. Hello! Nothing. Oh, finally. All right. Come on. Yeah. All right. Oh, that was painful. So, here's my idea. I'm going to send in all the mobs at the exact same time through the nether portal right as the ender dragon arrives and all the mobs are released. This way, technically speaking, we'll have every mob in the game here for at least like five seconds. You know, the more I think about it, the more I realize I may want more than just pants for this fight. Hmm. I'll create the final contraption to get them all in later. For now, though, I want to finish the Colosseum so we can get the rest of the overworld mobs here. To complete the build, we're going to need like 20,000 red wool. So... This is completely humane. I think one just died. Using the bamboo as fuel for the cobblestone to be turned into bricks, we were able to get the final 100,000 blocks or so. She's a beauty. Now we still have to finish the floor, but first I want to get all the mobs here so I can get the final spacing. I think the best way to do this is to get the rest of the neutral mobs first. First thing we gotta do is find a mine shaft. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Come on, big boys. Oh, they're a fast bunch. Hello! Ooh. Here you go. Here you go. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a bad idea. This was a bad idea. Oh no, oh no. Go, go, oh, so close. Oh no, he's mad at me. Tag, he took my block. Come on. Oh, hmm, go. Yeah, okay. Now to finish off our collection, we need to get the hostile mobs, but that's gonna require a bit more planning. Let's get the easy ones first though. 
Come here. No. Ow. 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 You know what? I don't even care. Go, 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 go. Oh. Okay. Hey, yo. No. Ow. Don't ask. What? All right, this plan's gonna work flawlessly. Ow, 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 ow. One eternity later. Ow, 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 ow. Ooh! Flawless. Yes, yes, no, no, yes. Ooh, come on, come on. Stay in, stay in, don't go, don't, don't go. Now, we have to trap all the raid mobs, and I think I have an amazing plan to do it. This is going well. This is going very well. Oh, I got stuck in a mountain. Reboar! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now all we have to do is go to a village, start a raid, trap all the mobs, and bring them over to our base. How hard can that be? Ooh, I'm in those steroids. He's moving so fast. Where's the evoker? Where's the evoker? No, no, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. Get, get in the boat. Yes, yes, he's in the boat. He's in the boat. Yeah, so you get name tag. Ah! Yeah, right, come on. Come on. No, no. Can I hit you? Yes, I can. Oh, 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 that was dodgy. Now, there is no way that we're going to try and walk that evoker all the way over here. So I have a better idea. All right. Egg. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. No. Come here. Come here. Oh, no. Go. Oh, what? Ooh, go. Yeah. Okay. Now that we have nearly every mob captured, we need to focus on the three main bosses. The Elder Guardian, the Wither, and then finally, the Ender Dragon. Oh boy. First, we're gonna get the Elder Guardian. To do this, we need to find a monument. Now, we're gonna need to get him back to our base using minecart rails, but we have a problem. My base is 1,400 blocks away. If I build the rails on the ground, he has a high chance of suffocating if he goes by a tree, and if a mob stands on the rails, he's gonna stop, and I'm gonna have to go down there and push him. I could build a giant tunnel, but that would take hours. So there's only one real solution to this. Build an automatic bridge maker 100 blocks in the sky. Now, I'm not sure if I built this thing to go the right way, but uh, we're about to find out. So if I sit in the minecart. Oh, it works. Now we just wait. Went a bit too far. Now we gotta figure out how to get the guardian out of the temple. To do that, we throw sand at the ocean. Literally. Once we make a box of sand, we jump down and place sponges, which magically cause the ocean to disappear. Minecraft is weird. Jeez, bro, you're acting like you don't want to be caged up and fight to the death. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, yes! Yes, go! Don't sting me. Don't do it. Oh, there he goes. Don't die. Please don't die. Hey! Oh! Oh, we got it! Oh, run! Oh, okay, wait. Get away, get away, get away. There he goes. Slowest man alive. Bloop. Okay. Not sure if he needs water, but here you go. Ow! Now, while we're at it, we'll grab a guardian and plop him far away from the other mobs. And why not snatch a witch from the balcony? There she goes. And we'll grab a shulker from the end. Can't be that hard, right? This is a moment captured from the attempt. This is a shulker refusing to enter the overworld. No, 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 no. <laughs> and this is a warden floating after the shulker shot him. Now we missed showing a few of the mobs being captured, but here's the axolotl, a zoglin, a piglin, a glow squid, and an LA. Now all we have left is the wandering ah. trader, the wither, and the ender dragon. The wandering trader has to be done at the end, so let's prep the wither. First, we need some skulls. So... The heck is that thing? Why are you standing on each other? Get off! Now, before we build the wither cage, let's finish the floor. Okay, before we put the wither in and get the ender dragon, we gotta make sure everything is ready. First thing we're gonna do is replace all this dirt with sand so that when everything gets released, these creatures don't have little things above their head. Okay, so first we have to wait for a wandering trader to show up. We're gonna trap him, build the wither cage, and then leave. And when we come back, we'll have the ender dragon in our hand. <laughs> I hope. Oh, there he goes, okay. Go, go, go. Uh, don't ask what happened to the llamas. <laughs> we only have like 30 minutes before he despawns, so we gotta get the wither down now. I got this amazing design from this YouTuber, but I made one small adjustment. Okay, well, let's hope I built this thing correctly. Uh, give me my anvil. All right, and here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Great. Leave the premises. Okay. Okay. Now we get the things. Oh. Now, when I load the chunks again, the wither's gonna be free. I left out part of the build. This way, when I return and break the signs and load in the chunks, everything will be set free. Now I want full netherite armor. So we need diamonds and netherite. That's a lava lake. Oh, no. And I just need a bit of gold. 
Then we can make all our netherite and... Now you may be wondering, there's no way at this point in the video he would go into a bastion and risk death after accomplishing nearly everything. He's not that stupid. He was. He was that stupid. Heal all the things. Arriving at a village, I stole their smithing table and made my full netherite gear. It was now time. Time to get the Ender Dragon into the Colosseum. Dum dum dum. Put dramatic music there. <laughs> I'm so cool. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is place a bunch of blocks in the sky. You see, in a normal dragon fight, the dragon flies to pre-designated spots. But a glitch was found where if you put blocks at a high Y level at these spots, the dragon gets confused since there isn't just air there and then he freezes. Now that it's finished, we need to respawn the ender dragon. Now we just gotta take out all the crystals and then we'll get- Ow! Hey! Okay, now we just camp the last crystal and we wait for him to perch. Please don't shoot those at me. Oh, he's going down. He's going down. The minute he touches, he's touched. Boom. And we fly towards him. Hey, friend. Ow. Then he, he's frozen. It worked. It half worked. Okay, now now we just have to move this giant man. He, he just killed an enderman right in front of me. Oh, he's moving. Yes, we're moving him. We have to get him all the way over there. So uh, this could take a minute. We need to kidnap this giant being and send him off into another galaxy so we can kill another one of his kin. Am I evil? Nah, nah. Sad. Oh, he's near the gateway. Does this mean he's gonna go? Ooh, it worked. He's gone. Now that he's gone, the game should send a new ender dragon back to spawn after like a few minutes. Oh, oh, there he is. There he is. All right, well, he hasn't come down in an eternity, so I'm gonna go up there and see what's going on. Ah, I see. Okay, one more. Oh, oh no. I really hope I have my light. I do. Okay. okay, now he should light the portal once he dies. Ah, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, help me! Are you like that, huh? All right, so now that the portal is lit, we need to bring the Ender Dragon back here. I may need to push him back. Oh, no, he's gone. He went back. He went back. Okay, let's grab our lever. And oh, he's gonna smack us when we get to the other side. So, okay, this is where we go back. He's gonna smack us. All right, we're good. And he should be frozen. Okay, so it just took a while, but he froze while flying right to the middle of this pillar, which is really inconvenient. Um, and now for the final parts. We push him into the middle of the island and dip him into the portal. This will create a duplicate dragon on the other side. I think. I, I hope. If this fails, I'm so screwed. You see, by dipping the Ender Dragon's hitboxes into the portal, the game for some reason creates a duplicate at 0-0 in the overworld. The developers never thought that some idiot would ever figure out a way to light the portal with the Ender Dragon still alive. But they've never met me. I googled it. I had to fly through the portal to get out because it kept smacking me. We gotta get out, we gotta get out, we gotta get out. Go, 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 go. We can clear the chunks, clear the chunks. Oh, we can only, I only pray that works. Okay, we need to get it far away. Now, there is currently an ender dragon sitting in the middle of my Colosseum. So before he destroys everything and everybody, we need to get the nether mobs here. All right, so let's build a portal right here. Break the minecart, he'll go through. Push this guy, break the minecart. Okay, he's gone. All right, push this chonky boy. Go, okay, maybe he's in. Yeah, he's in. Okay. You're, you're, you're really close. Nope, nope. Come here. Oh, did he go through? Yeah, he gone. Okay, we got right in the corner. Hello, sir. Oh, we need to break his minecart. Okay, he's gone through. All right, first thing we gotta do is fly really far away because we don't want to spawn in right inside of that Colosseum. We want to be a distance away to get prepped. Okay, let's hop through and let's pray that we don't end up in the Colosseum because that would be really bad. And we're good. Ooh, diamonds. All right, we're within about a thousand blocks. We're gonna hold back and we're gonna wait for it to be nighttime. This way, all the other mobs won't get burned by the sun and I can officially kill everybody. Okay, so we gotta go far. We gotta go far right to avoid the Colosseum. We gotta find the cobblestone bridge that we made. Okay, perfect. We're gonna circle all the way around and try not to run out of rockets. We gotta break the signs. We're gonna break the signs and we gotta run in. We're gonna go as far as our rockets will take us. Okay, here's... Oh, that's the Colosseum. That's that's the entrance we want, actually. Let's get really far away. I really hope not everything is dead. Okay, now we go for it. Free gapple. Get our pickaxe out. We need to destroy the signs as we land. And... Where are they? Go, 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 go. No, that didn't work. It did work. Oh, the ender dragon's here. Everybody's here. Oh, whoa. Okay, everyone's dying. Everybody's gonna die. Oh, this man got pushed directly. Oh, 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 no, no. Oh, yeah, they're all waiting for me. No. You know what? This is an easy kill. Somebody poisoned me. I'm running right towards the wither. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me. Everybody get distracted on the wither. Oh, you're still not distracted on the wither. I, I can't see. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know why I splashed that down. I probably didn't need to. That man is still chasing me. Mayor, I'm killing something. You are the thing that's going to die. Oh. I don't know if I actually needed to be scared. Oh, he killed them. Oh, 
Oh no, Billy! Billy 2.0 is coming. This guy's just wandering around. I don't know where this man's going. He's going to get smoke erect. Oh, he dropped a totem. I don't even want the totem. Where's where is the wither? Oh, he's up there. Okay, okay. I need to avoid him. This guy out. Ow. Stop. Stop hitting me. Okay. There's a glow squid. You, you can die too. Okay, death to you. No, move, move, move. Okay, I'm sorry, Wolf. I know you're my friend, but you need to die. Everybody needs to die. Oh, I'm so sorry. This warden is still. I gotta, I gotta kill the warden. Okay. Yeah, get distracted. Stay distracted. Oh, I don't like this. He looked at me. He looked at me real funny. Can I kill him? Did I put him in a hole? Oh, this works. Oh, it doesn't work. I get take that back. I immediately take that back. Oh, is the wither on top? Oh, the wither's on top. I don't have a bow. Uh, okay, this, this could be problematic. Kill the panda. Oh, I made such a funny noise. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm not sorry, but I, ah! Oh, everything's after me. Oh, I, I need to get away. I can't fly. I'm under everything. Using one of these. What's going on up here? What's going on? That man's shooting at me. The warden. Oh, the wither is still. Okay, I, I need to, I need to solo one of these things out. The ender dragon does not care. He is chilling and I am okay with that. But this wither, oh God, I did not plan a good enough bow for this. Oh, I needed to, I need him to come down to melee. I need, I need to stay away from the warden. Ow, ow, stop. I need to stay away from the warden and keep hitting him. Okay, I missed him. That's probably not what I was trying to do there. No, okay. Oh God. Oh God, the warden hit me. I need to, okay, I'm just gappling. I'm gappling again. I don't trust this. I don't trust this. Okay, where's the wither? Of course, he's right there. Makes sense. Why wouldn't he be right above my, please? Oh, every time he kills a mob, he gets health back. You know what? I could go to my chest and grab a bow. I also don't want to die. That would be, that'd be a horrible situation. Come on, come on. I just got to get him to melee. Stop, stop. Let me fight you. Why do you suck? I hate you. Oh my gosh, this is going to take forever. Oh, there's a mushroom down here. No, stop it. Stop it. Uh, this is gonna take a while. Get my sword out. It's gonna be a lot easier. I think, I hope. Okay, my health is okay. As long as the warden doesn't come over here, we're good. Not a statement I usually say when fighting the wither. Oh, my health. No, I'm just, I'm sending it. I'm sending it. Okay. Oh, okay, he's dead. Okay, now I gotta go find the warden. Is the warden dead? No, he's not dead. Oh, there he is. Hello, sir. Hello. This is a really sad fight, but I'm okay with it. You're just kind of stuck there. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He's doing his, oh, I got stuck. Oh, no. Maybe I can just sneak in. Oh, I think he missed me. Ha. You know, nerd. That's right. You're stuck in a hole. Oh, Diane. I'm stuck here with you. That is true. That that is actually slightly problematic. I just, I'm just gonna keep gappling. Oh oh oh! Move away. Move away. Okay. I, as long as I stay on top of my health, I'll be fine. Um, I really shouldn't be down here with him. No no no. Okay, keep gappling. Keep gap. You know what? I need to get out of here. I need to get out. Uh, I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out. Okay. Oh okay. Chill. That's whoa. Wait, this man's stuck down here with me. Oh no. Chill. Okay. There's a sheep that died down here. End of the lay. I'm sorry, LA. But you need to. Okay. You need to die. You need to die. As long as I can keep him away from the melee. He's dead. He is a dead boy. Okay. Oh, we have left is is the ender dragon who who for some reason is just just chilling up there okay and this guy needs to die um you know what i'll let you out of your your mine cart here because you stole all of my sand um yeah so i'm gonna go and grab a bow real quick i have returned can i hit him midair oh i got you midair boy oh i felt now, i think he will come down at half health fight but we're gonna have to find out oh yeah now now he's doing his thing he should come down here to zero zero come here come here boy come here okay maybe i'm just gonna oh he's fireballing me okay he, he, that means he's below 50 percent. he is really flying around. End stone. Okay, get in there. Get, we gotta smack him. Oh, he smacked me. Smack him. I think I'm hitting him. It's very quiet, but I think he's, he's getting hit. Okay, oh, I take him down. Can I take him down from this? Come on, please, please. Oh, no, of course not. Uh, of course not. He's just gonna keep flying around. He's gonna do his little patterns. I'm gonna snipe. Man, my aim is on fire. I've been hitting him like all. He's, maybe he's flying slower. No, nope, I'm better. I've decided. Move. Come on. Yes. Okay, right here. Oh, I'm doing damage. I'm doing big damage. Oh, he's dead. He is a dead boy. <sighs> now that we've proven we're the alpha of this world, we should probably build a house to live in. But not just any house. I want to build an enormous cherry blossom village in the new cherry biome and put all the other hardcore YouTuber houses to shame. To do that though, we need to find a spot to build it. Okay, this looks perfect. Like all good cities, the first step to building them is tearing down every tree in sight. Ah. Much better. All right, so I've set up this little base in the valley and now it's time to get building. So I made this sketch of what I want the village to look like. I think I want to start with this building in the back first. I'll be turning it into a smelting and processing building to help get the others built. The first thing we need to do is map out where the foundation's going to be. I'm gonna use a mix of stone and andesite for the foundations and the roadways inside the village. Okay, so now that the foundation is done, it's time to start building. I haven't really figured out how I'm gonna build this yet, but I found this picture on Google I liked and I'm gonna try and build it. All right, so I like how the base is going so far, but it's a bit too much wood. I think I'd like to replace these pillars with something. Mm, ooh, yeah, I think I like that a bit better. I'm gonna replace all of them around with that. All right, so this is our start and now we gotta figure out where to go from here. I began using some of the spruce wood I had collected earlier to build up the frame of the interior. Oi.
Something I've noticed a lot with Japanese buildings is that they have these little supports and random designs on the outside. So I started playing around with some trapdoors and stairs, see if I could recreate some of them. I was getting bored of my block palette, so I decided to smelt down some terracotta and used its glazed versions. I've never built with these before, so this is either going to look awful or super cool. Alright, now we have the first layer done, and this is super important. You see, something I've noticed with the architecture is that these buildings are the exact same thing stacked on top of each other. All I have to do is repeat it up and up until until I get to my desired height. Big brains. All right, so at this point, we should probably put a roof on this thing. To recreate the roof from the picture, we'll need to mess around with some designs first. Nope, nope, nope. Ooh, nope. I like this one. It has a nice woo to it. This was probably the trickiest part of the build. I kept breaking and retrying things, but I finally found something I was somewhat satisfied with. All right, now that layer one is finished, time to repeat it all the way to the top. I wasn't sure how tall I wanted it, so I just kept going till I got carpal tunnel. Okay, well, aside from the emotional pain of sitting here for six hours placing blocks, I like some pizza. I'd say I'm in some pretty good shape. So now that the exterior is done, let's get the interior finished as well. And that's it. The smelting and processing building is done. Huh. It looks so lonely. All right, so the next thing I want to work on is the gate to get into the valley. Now, for those of you small brains who think there's an issue with having a mountain in between your front door and your house, you've clearly never heard of high-grade explosives before. But we'll worry about nuking the mountain later. For now, let's clear an area for the gate to be built. Oh! Oh! Hmm. <clears throat> That went well. Okay, so we'll start it at this corner, then over here. It's probably a wide enough. Yeah, that'll be wide enough. You know, I'm looking at it, and I feel like I want to make it bigger. Oh my goodness, this is taking forever. All right, so now we got some black stone out. I want to accent it here. Yeah, probably the other side. Yeah, I like it. Now let's build it up a little. Okay, I want to try... Let's take out this middle column. I want to try putting either red terracotta or red concrete at the middle. Okay, yeah, that makes it stand out a lot more. So let's try the concrete. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. That's going to stand out a lot more when it's finished. Okay, so now we got to duplicate this design on the other side. Off my gate. Now, to do the roofs of either side of the gate, I've pulled up real schematics and images of Japanese gates, and I'm gonna try and copy a similar design to this one. Only, mine's not white, and not in a forest, and it doesn't have statues of dogs. All right, so it's taken shape. What are you doing down there? Get out of my gate. I don't like you. All right, now it's time to do the middle portion all the way up there. And now we finish the gate. Oh no. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh! <laughs> All right, now we just have to dig a giant hole right through the center of the mountain. I'm just kidding, we're gonna blow it up. But we're gonna need a few things to get that done. Hmm... No, oh, there's a thing there! <laughs> oh, there's five hoglins! What is your problem? Okay, fine, we'll go mining for the debris. Well, that was painful. Now that we have our supplies, it's time to build our tunnel boards. You see, rather than mining a giant tunnel by hand like a peasant, these tunnel boards use TNT. It's launched onto ancient debris and explodes. The debris is immune to TNT and can be pushed by our flying machine to press forward as the TNT explodes. And now, <laughs> um, it uh, doesn't work. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Oh, I think it works. Aha. This is sick. This is going to save so much time. All right, so to make this a bit quicker, I made two of them.
I just did that for a transition. Um, play the next clip. All right, so now that we put a giant hole right through the middle of the mountain, let's clean it up a little bit. And yeah, all right, that's better. This should make it a lot easier to work with and build inside. Okay, so I'm thinking we take this design, put it over there, here, and there. Then we'll put giant pillars in the middle. That'll hold up the cave. No idea if it'll look good, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, now that we have the template down, I think we need to go and get some green warped wood from the nether. We can fill that in as the backdrop. Oh, 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 that's that's lava. That's lava. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, okay, okay, let's try not to die. And now it's time to just grab a little bit of wood. Nothing feels better than some good old deforestation. All right, first we gotta clear out this little area behind here. All right, so now that we have the background filled out, I wanna fill it this green wood. I feel like it's either gonna look good or dreadful. Oi, what do you want? Oh, yeah, that's right, run boy. I mean, I kinda like it. I think I'll have to see the full thing with it, but two hours later. All right, so it's not looking too shabby. I'm thinking in every one of these slots, we can put a different Japanese word. But I have no idea what to write there yet. So for now, let's deal with the roof as it's, uh, <laughs> it's looking a little rough. My first thought is to put red concrete everywhere and maybe accent it with some black. No idea if that'll look good, but I'll go grab some. All right, to make this a bit easier, I've come up with a plan. If I make a trap door, then I place it in a nook like this, stand here, and right click it, it'll sink me to only one block tall. This way, I only have to mine out a one high space, and I just take out the floor. It'll save me a bit of time since I won't have to mine two layers at a time. Okay, now that we got the banners going down each side, I want to try like a spider pattern. I like it. It's very basic, but I think it'll work for the ceiling. I would just gotta copy it all the way to the end. Where are you getting this dirt from? Why are you bringing it into my tunnel? Get out! Oh, emerald. All right. Ow. So I capped off all the pillars. I think they look a bit better now. I also added some detail to the ends of these. I think, I think if I double it, yeah, and then I'll rise it up. Hey, oh, hey, talking to the camera. I'm gonna double it and get it all the way to the ceiling and see what that looks like. Ooh, I like this. The alternating pattern. Okay, now I just gotta paste it onto everything. Uh, it's gonna take a while. And there she is. The tunnel is completed. You know, thinking about it, a tunnel should probably lead to something. As of right now, if you were to walk out the other side of this tunnel, you would fall to your immediate death. I should probably fix that. Some of this. Yeah, let's go this way a little, why not? I have no idea if each segment is even, but I'm just winging it. Okay, that looks bad. All right, so to try and save these stairs, I'm gonna fill in the sides. I took an inspiration for these builds from absolutely nowhere. I was completely winging it and had no idea if it would look good. And with that being said, I present you stairs. Hey. All right, now that we have a way into the valley, it's time to get back to building the village. The next building I want to construct is a huge library with tons of space for my enchanted books and my enchanting table. With a rough plan in mind, I started building. <laughs> I'm, um... I'm out of blocks. Well, time to get some more. Okay, so the first block we need is andesite. Did you have a baby? Okay, first thing we need is andesite. Alright, I need like 800 andesite, so this could take a while. Alright, so that should be enough andesite. Um, how do I get out of here? Alright, so now we need like, um, 8,000 of these blocks. Yeah. Let's go! Alright, that's probably enough. We just need a couple more things from base. Now we just have one more issue before we can start. You see, we need like 2,500 prismarine just for this build. And if I try and mine it like this... Alright, this is working a lot better than I originally planned it working. Oh, then I might run into a bit of an issue. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh. We're good. Now, we could drain like 10 temples and mine them all manually, or we could build a slaughtering house and mercilessly kill thousands of guardians and harvest their scales to be made into blocks. Humanely, of course. First thing we need to do is kill the elder guardians. All right, that's one. Oh, hello. Number two. 
All right, and that was three. Now, to farm guardians efficiently, we're gonna have to use the nether. You see, the overworld caps the amount of mobs in a single area to 70. And since we want thousands of guardians spawning per minute, we need to get around that. The minute a mob enters the nether, however, the mob cap in the overworld resets. To actually pull this off, we need to make a max size nether portal at 23 blocks long. Then, using an easy block to mine, we construct a 21 by 17 area on either side of the platform. This will capture a majority of the spawn points the guardians regenerate from. Using fence gates and water, we create a stream that flows into the nether portal and add a small well around the edges. Lastly, to persuade the fish to swim into the nether portal and give their lives to serve as building blocks, we place soul sand all over the base of the temple. Soul sand creates bubble columns underwater and will force the guardians to swim up and then be pushed through the nether portal. Now, we just need to construct a humane way to extract the scales once the guardians go into the nether. And to do that, we're gonna burn them alive! All right, we build little circles around the portal like this, and it will enable the guardians to fall through it after I eat them through the other side. Some campfires for the guardians to fall onto. Then we place some hoppers like this to collect the drops. Then we surround the base like this so the guardians don't flop out. And now we commit genocide. All right, so I've sat here for a couple hours, and now it's time to see how much prismarine we got. Uh, okay, this might have been a bad idea. Um, okay, well, it's the only way we can get through, so. No, no, okay, redo, redo, redo. Take two, everything's fine. Things are not fine. They've escaped. Oh, no. Um, 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 um. A few ums later. All right, so we mainly just need the prismarine shards for now. Make them into bricks. All right, that should be enough bricks for the second building. Now we need to get back home. I'm using stairs and trap doors again around the edges because, well, they look cool. I'm gonna have the roof dip out a lot more from the frame than the last one. I don't want every building to be small and skinny, and I think this one's gonna look cooler anyway. Yeah, that's nice. Now let's finish it off. All right, so the outside of the library is done, but this looks kind of awful. It's just two random buildings sitting across from each other. So let's build a road to connect them. To make the path look worn in, I'm gonna place stairs here and there. The little air gaps they leave make it look like the road's been walked on a lot. Ooh, yeah, that actually looks a lot better. All right, now we gotta decorate the interior, only I have no idea what to do. It's like every build I've ever done. Probably something like this, maybe. Mm, maybe I could find a design from like actual. I kind of like the sliding door designs going. I wonder, I wonder if we could do something with slabs. All right, I'm thinking we do like a little privacy screen right here. I kind of like it. What if we alternated all slabs and then we do one with stairs and slabs? Yeah, I like it. Let's do that all the way up. Hmm. I spent a bit of time on the walls trying to decorate them so they didn't look so plain. Since it's a library, let's place some bookshelves. Okay, now we need an area to enchant. I've always liked the idea of enchantment tables sort of sunk into the ground like a wine cellar. For all the OCD people, there you go. All right, and with that, the library is complete. I wanted to test out some ideas, so I built smaller houses behind the library to fill in the area a little. This project has literally taken so long, and I still have the main mega structure to build and a bunch of others. To put this in perspective, I've managed to watch nearly every season of Naruto during this build. There are 27 seasons! But anyway, I want to fill in the other side of the valley with houses before we get to the main structure. However, we have a slight issue. I've, um, run out of cherry wood. Now, I could go hunting for another biome, deforest it and return home, but I think I'll take the more environmental route. We're gonna make an automatic tree farm. That bit just took like 30 minutes to film. Hmm, apparently there are none for 1.20 yet. I wonder what would happen if we built one that was designed for oak trees and then just planted cherry blossom saplings. Nah. Works like a charm. With the resources gathered, I started on the new section of the village. Okay, so I think it's best if this time we put pathways first before we make the buildings. This way everything connects a lot nicer. With the pathways finished, I began framing where we were gonna put down the new houses. <gasps> Is that a donkey? Donkey! Hi! You wanna come back with me? I have a house for you. No. Oh. Screw you too! Nah, hey, I'll show you. I'll build you a house that you'll be begging me to live in. No, I'm not sure why a donkey gave me this much motivation, but for the next six hours, I said absolutely nothing and just built. All of the smaller buildings follow a similar pattern and style to the larger ones. I would have liked to create more variety, but I had spent over a hundred hours already on designing and building these things, so I just didn't have the time. All right, the left side is complete. And with that, I present you the village nearly complete.
what's left is the mega structure in the center of the village and some smaller ones around. <laughs> oh boy. Let's start with the small ones first. My original drawing showed buildings on the mountainside, so I picked a spot to overlook the city and began building. I wanted these structures to be tall enough so they'd be seen from the village, so I spent a little longer than I should have. You know, even though that took nine hours, I'm glad we put those there. Now I just need to curl up in a ball and die. But now we gotta focus on the main building of the village. I want two things to be part of this build. First, it has to be way bigger and cooler than the others. And second, I want a dragon, like, on, on the building. Hugging it. I want to put it smack dab in the middle, only there's a couple things in the way. Uh, it should be a big enough area to do it. Now let's figure out where the foundation's gonna be. All right, well that's about how big I wanna make it, and now it's gotta go way up there. Finalizing the designs on this build was painstaking, but I'm happy that we actually now have a place to live in, and with that, I give you the Cherry Blossom Village. Now that we're no longer homeless, we can work on more important things, like filling in a new closet. Hmm, that's not a lot of options. Well, good thing Minecraft just added 4,000 new armor variants, because now we're gonna collect every single one of them. Now the first step to collecting every armor set is gonna be collecting every armor trim, which requires flying thousands of blocks into new 1.20 chunks. Now there are 16 trims in total, and the first two are located in the nether. Alright, so the first armor trim has a 4.8% chance of spawning in a fortress, and the other one has a 4.8% chance of spawning in a bastion. Ah, I guess we'll be starting with the fortress. Now, there are up to 20 chests that can spawn per fortress, which means there's pretty high odds that I... that I get one. Well, one out of 16 acquired. Hmm, maybe this won't be as hard as I thought it would be. This was a mistake! This was a big mistake! I hate bastions! I'm sure they weren't his parents. Oh, hello there. All right, and now I just need 14 more trims. Oh, 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 oh. What the... Now after four hours of searching for the next trim, I was getting bored, but I was instantly distracted by some good luck. Ugh, an awful chest. Oh, a dune trim. Oh, two of them. And from then on, everything began to change. Ooh. Oh, yes, yes. No, no. Another one. Huh. Wondered how that happened. With five out of the 16 acquired, I stumbled onto one of the new trail ruins from 1.20. According to the wiki, ruins can contain up to four of the trims that I need. Now what you're supposed to do is delicately dig around, find some suspicious gravel, and gently brush it and hope for a trim. Ooh. But I was curious what the trail ruin looked like, so I excavated the entire thing. I need to, um, repair my tools. Was that completely unnecessary? I think not. But now that the structure is completely revealed, getting the trims should be easy. Garbage, garbage. Who puts glass and gravel? Ooh, a wayfinder armor trim. Now after digging up more garbage than a raccoon, I was only able to find one more of the trims, but the final one eluded me. Elude, eluded, eluded. I couldn't find it, so we had to scurry off and find another trail rune, and after a few more hours, I didn't find one. But I did find a jungle temple. <laughs> Alright, now apparently you can find a wild trim in here. You can also get shot, so I should probably be careful. Mm, I can never remember what order Ah, I'm a genius. Break E. Call me James Bond or oop. And now, ah, it's a waste of time. Wait, doesn't this place have a secret chest? Just desecrating a holy temple, don't mind me. Yes, and two of them as well. Now that I've made my contribution towards ethical exploration, just desecrating a holy temple, we still need to find another trail ruin. Hello, ancient civilization. I will now desecrate you. A little desecrating later. Oh, this is the final one we need. Now, so far, all we've done is go through people's graves to extract their belongings. Now, we actually have to face a challenge. You see, the rest of the trims are hidden away behind bosses or entities, and they get mad when they just smell you. So, we're gonna have to be a bit more careful. Now, apparently the war trim is down here, but death is also down here. So, I should not do that. Whoa, this is less than ideal. Hello there. Ooh. For those of you wondering how this happened, I'm not quite sure either. Oh, a noise. A 
Okay, we can finally leave this horrid place. There's another trim down here, and it only has a 1.2% chance of spawning? Ooh, oh, it's the trim. Crap, I'm dead. I'm soon not to be alive. No! The trim despawned. A few angry wardens later. Oh, oh, not again. Not again, it's coming, it's coming. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so we have four trims left before we have the monumental task of collecting what, like, 40,000 diamonds? Oh, I'm not gonna be sleeping for a week. Excuse me, just need to murder you and steal your things. Ooh. Now the next trim I was aiming for is found at the bottom of the ocean. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, that seems nice. A little swim, see some coral, and just relax after all your hard work. Wrong! Try getting constantly paralyzed, nearly dying from being eaten by what looks like an enormous shark with a Shrek eyeball, losing my armor, drowning, spending five hours jumping through four monuments, all the fine. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay, two trims left. Somewhere down here is... Whoa, is this how you get into the stronghold? Now, the nice thing about the eye trim is that it has a 100% chance of spawning in a library. So even I can't screw that up, right? <laughs> right? Ah, nice. Now, the last one's located in an end city. Should be fairly easy to get. Stop, stop, stop it! You're heading me out of here! Ah, finally. Now that we've completed an entire Shulkercraft video in about five minutes, it's time to start on the hard part. You see, now we have to collect every resource that each trim can use, each armor set for the resource, and the supplies to build the armor sets, not to mention all the diamonds we're gonna need, but... Um, so I just did some research, and I think I wildly underestimated how many resources this is gonna take. So there are 16 smithing templates that we've collected, which means one chest plate can have 16 different designs on it, but you can also choose from 10 different colors by combining it with gems and ingots. So that's 160 different types of chest plates you can get, but that's just chest plates. You also have to do all that math again for helmets, leggings, and boots. So there are 16 designs in 10 different colors. Each complete set can have 160 versions, but since there are four pieces in a set, that requires 640 templates and 64 of the 10 different resources. But, but that's not all. There are six different types of armor. So not only do I have to get 160 full sets of netherite armor, but between netherite, diamond, iron, chainmail, gold, and leather, you need another 3,840 templates and 400 of each resource. But the astute among you may be asking, why are there seven armor stands? After all, there are only six armor types. Because for some reason, Mojang put turtle helmets in the game. Nobody even uses them. Why do they exist? No one even knows how to make them. Now, I need you to understand something. It took me 24 hours to get like 36 of these templates. And we need 4,000 of them. That means if I went to search for them all, it would take mm, four months of playing 24 seven. What am I supposed to sleep? Does Mojang think I don't have a life? Well, I don't. Now, thankfully, we can actually make the trims by copying an original. However, that requires seven diamonds each to create, plus all the diamonds to use as trim colors and to make the armor itself. That means in total, if we want every trim for every set, we need 40,560 diamonds. <laughs> That's insane! The world record is like 18,000. And that took the months! How am I supposed to do double that in like a few weeks? <sighs> Well, better get to work then. I think I want to start with gathering the materials to make the armor before I worry about all the trims. So let's start with turtle helmets, since they seem to be the easiest of the bunch. To get the helmets, we need to breed two turtles together. So this is 100% a humane farm. All right, so we've AFK and bred them for a while now, and I think we should have enough skew. On the point of humane farms, let's set up an ethical cow farm. Now those vines will allow me to breed a near infinite amount of cows without them suffocating, but I'll explain why later. For now, <laughs> enjoy your wonder block. It's time to build an ethical iron farm for them too. A bad person. Okay, so we've got the first three resources underway, but we currently have nowhere to put the armor when we make it. Now we could put all the armor sets in the Cherry Blossom Village. Eh, or maybe the Colosseum. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> you know, this project is massive enough, it needs its own build, and I think I know what I want to make. This. Now, 
Do I know how to make that? No. First, we need to find a spot to put it. Ooh, these mountains are really close to the cherry village and will give it like a Greek temple feeling. All right, now let's outline an area. So I built this little outline inside the temple, and I think this is where I'm going to place the armor stands. We'll have seven different spots for each of the set of armors to be displayed, but I'm running into a bit of a problem while I set this up. Snow. There's so much snow. Aw, oh, come on. Why does it keep snowing? Now you may be asking. Well, if you didn't want it to snow, why'd you build the temple on freaking Mount Everest? And my answer to that is shut it, nerd. I have no solution for this. I'm just complaining. I think that we need to take a little break from the temple and focus on the 40,000 40, diamonds we're going to need for all the trims and the diamond armor. I don't really know how I'm going to get this many diamonds, so let's just go mining for an hour and see how many we get. Then we can do the math on how long this will take if we mine for them all. Yeah, nope, 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 nope. All right, now it's time to see how many diamonds we got from that hour of mining. This is gonna be fun. 251 out of 40,560, which is 0.6% of the way there. <laughs> Yay. While I work on a plan to not spend the next few months of my life in the mines, let's see how many trims of armor we can make. Not a lot. Well, let's put them all in the turtle helmets that we have to see how many we can get. You know, that's not looking half bad. Hmm. But it's kind of hard to see all the rows of armor stands. You'll probably do some sort of staircase to showcase the armor a little better, but I'll save that for later. Now, to make all the rest of the trims, we're not only going to need diamonds, but also all the blocks for copying the trims. Now, each trim requires a different kind of block to copy it. And on top of that, we also need all the resources to make all the colors for each armor set. So, while I work on a plan to get all the diamonds and netherite we're going to need for the later parts, let's work on getting these easier resources first. And the first resource we need are copper ingots. Ah. That was fairly easy. While we collect these resources, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Heh, <laughs> axolotl. I'm going to steal you. I will name you Jack. So we not only have to get resources for all the trims and armor, but also for the temple we're making, and, um... This is gonna be a pain. You see, because the mountain has snow everywhere, I don't want to make the temple white or else it's just gonna blend in. So instead, I think it's better to use blackstone as the main block, which in ordinary circumstances isn't the end of the world. But do you know where the best place to find blackstone is? The freaking basalt deltas. You know what else is in the basalt deltas? Death. Death is there. Whether you accidentally fall into lava or eaten by a magma cube. Take your pick. Maybe a piglin will even wander over and hit you with a sword. So that'll be fun to mine 50,000 of those blocks. In the end, though, I think it's going to be worth it. Okay, so now that we have all the materials required to make the trims, minus netherite and diamonds, but we'll worry about that later, I think we should do some more work on the temple, so we'll have a spot to put the armor when we actually get it. However, before we can go and mine out an entire biome of Basel Deltas, we're going to need a way to bring all the blocks back, which means I think we need a few more shulkers. Now, I could just make a shulker farm, but I don't need that many of them. And getting them manually isn't that bad, so I think it's a better option. Here I come. Oh, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Yes, yes, yes. Drop me. Drop me. Drop. Thank you. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This is not what I wanted. I mean, it kind of is, but... Oh, here I come. Smack. Smack. Huh. You left. Okay. Didn't know they could do that. Now, you might be thinking, Blood Flaps, you have a giant brain. Surely you didn't do that painful way of gathering shulkers for hours and hours. Surely. <laughs> Okay, we've got the shulkers. Now we need to go and mine 50,000 blackstone. While you're watching this epic montage of mining, you should subscribe. Okay, we need to figure something out. We need 40,000 diamonds and a few thousand ancient debris. Obviously, we've tried mining, and I don't want to be on my computer for months to do this, but I don't know a way yet that we can get that many diamonds and ancient debris. The world record took months to get half of what I need. That means nobody on Earth has found a faster way to do this. So I'm watching this tutorial on this diamond bore. There's just one small problem. This thing is going to take like six weeks to be able to do. And I don't know about you, but unless you want this video to come out in six more weeks, I got to figure out way around this. So, I have no idea what I'm gonna do, but um, I just hope it kind of comes to me as I'm hitting these blocks, you know? Sparks the idea. Any second now. 
get an idea any second. I have no idea, no plan, and no more chocolate milk. But I do have a buttload of blackstone, netherrack, and shroom lights. And you know what that means. We can build the temple to house the armor that we have no idea how we're gonna get yet. <laughs> what are the chances we never figured this out and just don't post this video? Okay, so this is the game plan for the temple. I'm gonna divide it into two parts. The flooring with the armor stands, and then the walls and roof. To begin though, we need to smell down some blocks. You see, although the main build is gonna be made out of blackstone, I want some nether brick around the edges to accent it. So we're gonna smell down all this nether rack and uh, hope it's gonna be enough. This could take a while. I just ruined the song, didn't I? But on the bright side, check out all the nether brick. All right, now it's time to get building. I'm gonna start by filling in the perimeter with blackstone. Even though I'm taking inspiration from a Greek temple, I wanna merge it with a more scary theme. And to do that, I'm also taking inspiration from a mythological build called the Temple of Medusa. For the floor, I'm beginning with a glowstone layer for lighting, but I ran out pretty quick and had to go to the nether for a few hours to get the rest. To showcase the armor better, I've designed this stair pattern so you can see all the hundreds of sets at the same time. To cap it off, I'm using shades of grey glass over the glowstone. It creates this mist illusion and reflection effect for the staircases that hold all the armor sets, which I don't have yet. Hmm. I forgot we still don't have a way to get the 40,000 diamonds to make all the diamond armor and duplicate the trims. Okay, I think the best place to start is by stealing other people's ideas. So the old record leader Carves, he tried building this redstone machine that, um, it blew up and didn't actually work. He ended up just going back to manually mining the diamonds, but I wonder if I could rebuild it if I could get it to work potentially. So I have a simple version of what he was using. I've actually used it before when I built the cherry blossom village to tunnel through a mountain, but I only used two. But uh, let me show you how it works. So the TNT is launched using a phantom duplicate glitch. It's similar to our infinite cobblestone farm or the TNT cannon we got to shoot the warden across the world. The TNT lands on this ancient debris and explodes. Now ancient debris has a much higher blast resistance, allowing it to be pushed by a piston while also not being affected by TNT. So Carves, the old record holder, I like how I'm calling him the old record holder even though I haven't beat him yet. He tried making like 30 of these things together, but they kept breaking on him. If I could somehow solve the issues he had, I could potentially pull off the impossible and get all the diamonds I need. I mean, after all, I've solved a lot harder problems than this. This is nothing compared to what we faced in the previous videos. I mean, I literally beat Minecraft in the void. I can do this. Oh, it's moving. It's moving. No. Why is it blowing up? I don't understand redstone. The slime won't move. I don't get it. But why did it go the wrong way? Where did half the machine go? Come on, come on. Yes, yes, no. No. If I can't figure this out, there's only one man who can. Well, this is a little awkward. All right, plan B, call in my roommate. What do you want, you peasant boy? Adio! I have issue. Don't worry, I'll solve it. I need 40,000 diamonds. Oh, never mind. Can't afford it. Sorry. Oh, Minecraft diamonds. Oh, we'll just go mining. Oh, idiot. The world record's like 20,000 in three months, and I need to double that in a week. How the frick is that supposed to be possible? I don't know. That's why I'm calling you. I don't know how to do that. Well, well what good is your IQ if you can't even get me Minecraft diamonds? Why would I even need Minecraft diamonds? Because, because I need Minecraft diamonds. Oh, is that my problem? Because I need your help. Ah! Ah! A short while later, if you do it, I'll buy you a cookie. Ah, <laughs> uh, fine. Okay, so while Matthew works on a design that I can build in my world a little bit later, I'll work on the next thing that I need, gold. You see, we need to make over a hundred sets of golden armor, plus gold is used as a trim color, so we need it for that too. So you know what that means. It's time to build an ethical gold farm. Also, that egg glue was just in a tree. <laughs> it was a tree glue. Get it? Tree house, tree. <laughs> We've completed an entire cookie video in 10 seconds.
We need to do some smacking to get all the gold we need. And by smacking, I mean dismemberment. A few thousand dead piglins later. So I've decided to set up an auto sorter to filter the junk out and just keep the golden nuggets. Okay, so that should be enough gold. But speaking of which of supplies you get from murdering things, let's check our ethical cow farm. Um, I think I broke the cows. <laughs> now, as much as I want to just hit all the cows at once, I can't. You see, the vines I placed in earlier prevent the cows' hitboxes from interacting. This prevents the cows from suffocating in the walls and lets thousands of them build up. However, if I were to hit them, then their hitboxes would interact midair and cause something like a cow fountain to happen. Which would be cool. No, I need to kill them with a looting sword. To prevent them all from sailing into the heavens, we're gonna place some slabs over their heads. Uh, huh. What the frick? And now for the most satisfying parts. Okay, well, that was a bit lame. Kill. Dude, that's literally enough meat to feed an entire alien race. Now that I've ended world hunger, it's time to move on to the next thing. Okay, while Matt is still working on the diamond machine, let's make all the armor sets that we can with the supplies we've collected to see where we're at. is more armor than I'll ever use in a lifetime. Okay, so now that we've gotten done the ooh. All right, well, to get our diamond bore, we need cookies. So it's time to head to Subway. What is noise? Editing my stupid video! Why? Because, Nathan, I spent $30,000 making it, and so I have to edit it at 2 a.m., so that'll be good. Also, you're awake at 2 a.m., so All right, up. well, did you figure out my diamond problem? <sighs> yeah, so, okay, two things. Number one is you don't need 40,000 diamonds, you need 32,000 diamonds. And the other 8,000 that you need to make all the diamond armor, you can just trade for for the villagers. Oh, nice. So that's quick. Um, the other thing is I took all the concept builds that you gave me and made a big world eating machine that can get you all the diamonds you need in only 36 hours, which is great. Except for the fact that it is extremely massive, costs a lot of resources, including 7,000 ancient debris. Uh, which is more ancient debris than you need to build a beacon, but uh, you're already getting 4,000 ancient debris to get all that netherite armor crap that you need, so whatever plan you have to do for that, just do it twice. 7,000 ancient debris? There's no way I have time to get that. I still have to make all the farms to make the enormous diamond bore. It needs like 20,000 slime blocks, plus the voyage trading, and I haven't even finished the temple yet. Now, there's only one solution to this. Yeah, so about that. I haven't really come up with a way to get the netherite yet, so I was wondering if you... All right, well, before I even consider starting to build this massive machine to get all the diamonds we need, we need to collect the mountain of resources required to build it. And first on that list is slime blocks. In total, we need 20... 21... 21... Thousand of them. Dear God. So you know what that means. It's time to build an ethical slime farm. First, we need a lot of stone. Then we need to put Fortune 3 on our axe. You see, a big part of this farm centers around mushrooms. And Fortune 3 will allow us to gather the maximum possible from those mushroom tree thingies. I'm using Il Mango's design for this instead of coming up with my own because, uh, because I don't want to.
Now, like I was saying earlier, the way this farm works is actually quite ingenious. In a swamp biome, slimes spawn dependent on the moon cycle. No moon cycle means no slimes, full moon means 100% of slimes will spawn. Now, this farm utilizes mushrooms, though, to get the max amount of slimes during the different moon phases. You see, normally a big old box like this would spawn all sorts of mobs, like skeletons and zombies, which we don't want. But mushrooms emit a light level of one when they're placed, and hostile mobs require a light level of zero to spawn. However, slimes are an exception and they can spawn up to a light level of seven. So by putting mushrooms everywhere, it allows for only slimes to spawn inside of our farm. Interestingly enough, if you tried to use red mushrooms for this, it uh, doesn't work. Now when the slimes spawn, they get enraged that I put iron golems inside of their house. So they charge full speed at them and then die on the magma blocks. Hoppers below collect the slime and voila, <laughs> you have an infinite killing machine. <laughs> Ethical. Now, we need to wait for around 80,000 slime balls to turn into blocks. So... Okay, well it's been a while, so now let's check on the supplies. That's, uh, that's a lot of balls. Alright, so that's the last of the 12 shulkers we need, and that's one resource crossed off the list. But I think I want to take a break from these farms and focus on something a bit more fun. Getting all the diamond armor we need to finish off the armor sets. You see, at first, I was gonna make all the armor from the diamonds that this diamond board would mine up, but Matt pointed out that we can trade for diamond armor from villagers, which would be much faster. And to maximize the trades, we're gonna use something called a void trader. I'll explain what it does in a minute, but it needs to be built in the end, so... Well, well, we... I think we're gonna build it off of the end island a little bit. Um... Oh! Oh! oh. Nope, stay back, stay back. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, no, 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 no. Water, water. Oh, how am I alive? Suck. Nope, go away. You know what? Okay there, no more places for the Endermen to spawn. All right, so now that we've completed an entire Mog Swamp video in 10 seconds, what the heck is this? I'm trying to collect every combination of armor in Minecraft. What? Rekrap already did it? And he made three videos out of it? Why am I not milking this? Wait, the first video came out before 1.20? How's that even possible? He died? It's not even in hardcore. What kind of build is that? Let's start on our void trading for the diamond armor. The first thing we need to get is a villager into the end. Now there's no end island to put him on anymore, but um, might have been a slight oversight. We'll just have to build something for him. Along the way, I found this really sick pond thingy in a cherry blossom grove. Let me know if you have any ideas on what we can use this for a bit later. Hello, villager children. I'm here to steal your father or mother. I believe in equal opportunity here. I'm not really sure who this is, but they're now kidnapped. And I should get them all the way to the portal. This could take a while. All right, so we're directly over the end portal, and now we gotta figure out a way to get him down into it. Don't look at me like that. It's a beautiful new home. Now, let's build you a place to exist. <gasps> See, <laughs> they like their new home. Now, let me explain how this thing works. First, we need a zombie. Then we'll drag him into the end to negotiate with villager. Fine. This will lower how many emeralds it's gonna take per trade. Now, we need two things from him. We want him to trade iron for emeralds and emeralds for diamond armor. He... He doesn't trade iron for emeralds. I just spent an hour on this dumb village. Okay, so apparently not every villager has that trade, but not to worry, this dude does. I think. Yeah. Holy biscuits, that's insanely cheap. Now we employ the void trading technique. You see, first we open up the trade window. Then the water pushes us through the end gate into a new chunk. However, our trade window is still open. We can swap our iron out for emeralds at a one-to-one -one ratio because of the zombie. Once we do that, it initiates the water to push us back through the end gate. Since we did the trade in a new chunk, our villager was left in an unloaded chunk, and as a result, he doesn't think we've traded with him, so our trades never run out. We can literally do this forever. Now at this point, you may be asking, was it necessary to remove the entire end island to do this? No, no, it was not. I simply just don't like Enderman. And I needed a few thousand endstone for the diamond bore anyway. Okay, now we just need to trade for the chain and diamond armor and fill up the platforms in the temple.
Now the astute among you may have noticed that our chain mannequins are missing their pants and their heads. That's because our armorer only sells chest plates and boots. <laughs> we uh, killed the one that sold leggings and helmets. It's a slight oversight. So we need to get those two. Hello everybody, just here to trade. No kidnapping will be happening. There we go. The armor sets are all collected. <laughs> except for netherite. But not to worry, I'm gonna procrastinate it even longer and instead focus on finishing the temple because I'm sick of all this snow falling while I'm here. First, we should finish filling in the base of this place. I wanna try... Yeah. That little red is a nice accent. Ugh, I'm just realizing how friggin' huge this place is gonna be, but... We got this. Now, I want this building to have a lot of detail, but the first thing we need to build are the walls. I find it a lot easier to make these huge slabs first, then figure out the detail to add on to them to add depth later. Okay, so I think the first thing I want to add detail to is the interior of the build. If you've seen my builds before, I kind of suck at interiors, so I think it's time to steal some designs. I've always been fascinated with like hieroglyphics and the weird shapes found in Egypt, so I think I'm going to try and use that style in the interior and just see how it turns out. looks randomly placed, but I like how it came out. Now, something that's important to all these Greek-type temples are the pillars, but I didn't want to make any old pillar this time, so I actually stole from a more Egyptian-themed build I found on Google for this. Now, the final piece is the roof. I think for this, I want to go back to the original design from the Temple of Medusa. This ended up being one of the trickiest parts. Since it was on such a massive scale and so high up, it was really annoying to build, but eventually when I got it down, all that was left was to fill in the roof. And then we were finished, the temple on the mountain. Okay, so now the temple is done, it's time to get our netherite armor and all the debris we're gonna need to make the diamond bore. All 6,000 of it. And to do it, we need honey. Well, to be more specific, we need beehives and to find the brick. <clears throat> That's fine. Now you may be thinking, why do you need bees to get netherite? And the answer to that is quite simple. You don't. You need honey. And with honey, we can make honey blocks, which are a crucial component to the machines that we need to get our netherite. All right, now that we got all the hives, it's time for our favorite thing, an ethical bee farm. The principle of the farm is quite simple. The bees will extract the pollen from the flowers outside their nest. When they return to the hive, it'll activate the dispenser with bottles. The dispenser will fill up the bottle with honey, dropping it to the ground where a hopper will pick it up from below. Nice. With the farm going on in the background, we can focus on the other resources that we need. And one of those main ones is redstone. And I don't know about you, but unless going to the mines and mining over 100,000 redstone ores sounds appealing, I vote we don't do that and instead bring a villager who volunteered for the position to the end and trade him emeralds for redstone. Now because of the sheer amount of redstone we need, we're gonna need to AFK at our iron farm for like at least 10 hours. So. Alright, now that that's over with, it's time to sit and trade for about mm, 10, 12 hours. I link below the footage in the description because I tried to speed it up for the video, but it was so fast and flashing that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna give someone a seizure who has epilepsy if I try and play this footage on screen and speed it up. So you can just go down there and look if you care. Alright, we've done it. We have all the redstone we need for the netherite and the diamond machines. And as a bonus, we got Carpal Tunnel with it. Yay! Alright, so we have everything to make the netherite machine, but we still have one more problem. You see, the machine that we're gonna be building has thousands of complex parts. And if a mob were to, let's say, shoot a fireball at it, I'd be screwed. So the best way to deal with this is to stop every mob in the entire world from existing. Now, since I'm not God, and I can't turn the game mode to peaceful, we're gonna have to use something called a mob switch. You see, Minecraft has a max number of mobs that can be spawned at a time. However, when you leave the area that has all those mobs, they'll all immediately despawn and then respawn in other places, attacking you again. So to circumvent that issue, we need to get creative. But first things first, we need to fill the mob cap. And the easiest way to do that 
is with Silverfish. However, my current stronghold doesn't have a Silverfish spawner. So... Ah. If I fall down there right now, I will die. All right, so now that the mob cap is filled, it's time to leave. But to do that, we're gonna use another portal that we've turned into a chunk loader. Similar to how we made the warden switch in the first video. You see, every player has a radius around them that mobs can spawn in existence. When that radius moves, the mobs despawn that are outside of it. However, if you leave the world using a nether portal, the game can't update the radius, so it leaves it exactly where it was. And now if I enter the overworld from a different spot, the old spawn circle will stay where it was is keeping the mob cap filled. Why are there still mobs spawning in here? Oh, so apparently mob caps are per dimension, which actually makes a lot of sense. So each dimension needs to be filled separately. So we need to reconstruct the same design in the nether, except this time, instead of silverfish, we're gonna use an unborn child to bait zombies into the nether. Ethical. I had to turn off the old world mob switch for this to work, but I'll turn it right back on after. All right, and with that, we have neutered the nether and the overworld, and it's time to begin the netherite mining. Well, that is after I get like 10,000 sand. Okay, now we're ready. Now, you're probably wondering how one gets five or so thousand ancient debris. And well, so am I. But good thing Matthew figured it out. And all I have to do is build the machines and clear out some areas for them to be placed. It can't be that bad, right? I need to clear 120 by 50 chunks? Dear God. Oh, just three chunks tall. Are you kidding? To mine all this ancient debris in the nether at this scale, we need mining machines. But to make them, we need to clear an area, which means lava, blocks, everything needs to go. All right, the first thing we're gonna make is what I like to call a catapult of death. This machine flings TNT in front of it and blows up everything in its path. In including you. So that should be careful. Now, because this machine is so big and so hard to render, trying to show the footage right now of clearing this area out will either cause seizures or it will just look like a big blur. So we're gonna skip through the part where the machine's actually mining, but never fear, dumb the door. I've linked all the footage in the description if you wanna go and cause your eyes some pain. However, this machine isn't even close to enough to clear out the area we need to get all the debris. You see, we need to make this 120 by 50 chunk wide perimeter just to fit the main mining machine machine that Matthew got for me. Now, since the TNT doesn't go through lava, we need to clear it out while our TNT dupers clear out the trenches for us. Now, I'm gonna try and show as much footage as I can from this, but since this is well over a hundred hours, you're gonna have to check the description for some of the footage. All right, so we've been using a variety of sand dropping flying machine thingers. This way they get rid of all the lava and the TNT dupers come along and blow it up. But they all kind of suck, so this has been taking a lot longer than it should have. But we're nearly done <laughs> the perimeter. All right, so now that we have this giant area mined out, we can start building the biggest machine I've ever attempted to build in my life. This chunky boy will not only remove lava, but this rear flying machine bit will blow up every block in its way using a TNT phantom glitch like we've used before. And all it needs is a little space, which is why we need to clear this giant area. And then once it's mined all the way down to bedrock, all we need to do is go down and mine all the ancient debris. Easy. Now, I'm slightly scared to start this because if I've placed one wrong block of red soda or slime or, or anything, the whole thing breaks and I have to redo the past eight hours of building. Thing. Oh, cross your fingers. Oh, oh, it works. <laughs> Let us rain destruction. <laughs> now, this footage is sped up about 50 times. If I were to play it normally, this is about how fast it goes. Which, by my estimates, should mean that we have about 30 hours left before it's finished this area. Okay, well, apparently I'm horrible at math, and that only took eight hours. Nice. Which means now it's time to mine the ancient debris. Okay, and that's the last of it. Now we have enough for the diamond bore and all the netherite armor. Okay, so now that we have all the ancient debris and supplies gathered, it's time for our final step, the diamond bore Matthew design. Okay, first we need to pick up all the supplies, though. I, uh, ran out of room for the shulkers.
Okay, now we need to actually find a location for the bore. This is super important because the less water or lava we run into will increase the speed that we find the diamonds. So we need to find a spot that is as water free as we can get. Now, I found this location a few thousand blocks away, and although there are lakes nearby, there's no ocean, so that should make it easier. Okay, so step one, we need to build a canyon all the way down to bedrock. And to do that, we're going to use TNT duper, similar to our cobblestone farm, but we'll be dropping the TNT right on the earth to um blow it up. Alright, instead of nearly blowing myself up, I think that went well. Nope. Nope. But with the canyon now created, we're ready to build what I like to call the Behemoth Top Notch Big Boy Super Saiyan 9000 Diamond Chonker Machine. Also known as, this will take 20 hours of my life to build, and if I place one wrong block, the whole machine will break. Nice. Well, let's get to work. You may be wondering, this looks really similar to Carves, the other diamond record holder's design. And, well, it is. In fact, minus this backside, it's an exact copy. But mud flaps, you may ask. Didn't that diamond board break, causing Carves to manually, like a peasant, mine the diamonds? And to that, I would say you're right, astute viewer. And that was Matthew's task to fix. The issue that he ran into is quite simple. You see, as the machine moves forward, occasionally gravel falls on the tracks of the diamond board, causing the TNT to not launch far enough and blows itself up. So, Matthew came up with a genius idea. Make the diamond bore 120 layers tall and blow up all the gravel so it can't fall. Yeah, I'm serious. That was his plan. But on the bright side, this will lead everything in its path. Then, we can just go down and mine the diamonds as we go. Simple. After I've built it, that is. All right, let's start. Wow. Look at him go. This is supposed to be an epic montage. Play some music. with that 20 seconds for you and the last 30 hours of my life, it's complete. Fun. Now, the way this machine works is not simple at all, but I'll try to explain it. These are the bores themselves. TNT is launched onto the front like so, and explodes. The ancient debris absorbs the explosion, but the cobblestone in front breaks. This section is essentially a bunch of flying machines, which will push the bores one block each time. This is the timer. You see, if you fired the entire thing at once, it overloads Java itself. So the timer is set at intervals, so each layer fires at a different time. We quite literally broke the game this time. But with that, let's obliterate the world and finish this a curse challenge. Lego. Wait. What? No. I must have placed the wrong block. It's. It's all over. This machine isn't physically possible to make. <laughs> Half of it's still moving. I don't even care anymore. If this video ends with my own machine killing me, <sighs> I'm done. What? You know that machine you use to get all the netherite? Uh-huh. You can, you can just use that tunnel bore for the overworld and it works perfectly fine and it's way better and it's way easier and it solves all the problems and none of this was necessary. Matthew! <laughs> This is still gonna take like uh, 50 hours or so. Just uh, putting that out there. Now, for those of you who are wondering why I use so many replay shots and why they're so fast, it's simple. I wanna show all the footage to prove that I actually did what I'm saying. I don't wanna just say like, oh, I spent 50 hours on this and then just skip to the end. But since my challenges are so ridiculous, I have to speed up the footage so much that people have commented that I need to warn about epilepsy and seizures. So be warned. Okay, well that wasn't torture at all. But now we can do the most satisfying part. Set up all the diamonds to be mined with Fortune 3. This is gonna take a while to place. That just took four hours. But it was worth it. Now all that's left to do is turn the diamond armor to netherite. And now we just have to copy all the trims with the diamonds that we have and add them to each armor piece. Hopefully it won't take too long. 
Post editing Nathan here. It took over 10 hours. Yeah, okay, back to the video. I feel like at this point, typically I'd go over the time it took and complain how long this video took to make. But honestly, spending over 500 hours of my life on this still feels so cool. As a kid making videos, you always want to be in this position where hundreds of thousands of people watch your crazy ideas. So even though I'm half brain dead now and sleep deprived, thank you all. Or at least that's what I would say if I was a simp. I'm so good at this game, I don't even need these armor sets. And to prove it, I'm gonna become so powerful that I can fight a warden naked. To do that, I'm gonna bring back the 1.14 god armor, obtain permanent potion effects, and get unlimited hearts. All in survival Minecraft without cheats, mods, or divine intervention. Now because fighting the warden with my wild berries dangling in the wind is a little bit intimidating, I want to test these ideas out against some other mobs to see how powerful we can get exactly. But first, let's figure out what we're starting with. With a full set of netherite armor, a skeleton only does half a heart of damage per shot. But if I add protection 4 to all the armor pieces, it takes some multiple shots before it even does anything. But we can go a step further. If I drink a turtle master potion and splash down a potion of regeneration, we're basically immortal. For about 20 seconds until the potion runs out. To one skeleton. Now to get stronger, the first thing we need to do is get way more OP armor. Thanks to Il Mango, a way was discovered to do just that. You see, Minecraft has enchants that are known as unique unique enchants, meaning that they have other enchants that can't be added with. Let me show you an example. If I try and apply infinity to a bow with mending, it doesn't work, since both infinity and mending are considered unique enchants. But back in 1.14 and 1.11, there was a time when Mojang coded the game wrong, allowing for these enchants to be put together. But you may be wondering, how does that help us get stronger defense? It's a bow after all. Well you see, the protection enchant has four variants, blast, projectile, fire, and then finally basic protection. Each variant has its own attributes. Blast protection will give you 8% resistance per level to things like TNT and creeper explosions. Wow, I only did like half a heart of damage. But offers zero protection to other types of damage. How? Projectile protection also offers 8% damage reduction versus arrows, shulkers, and even llama spits. I wasn't even aware that damaged you. Fire protection is a little more unique, offering the basic 8% per level reduction versus things like fireballs, but also reduces the amount of time that you're on fire by 15% per level. Then finally, you have normal protection, which scales at 4% damage reduction to all damage types, only half of what each of these specifically can defend against. Now, normally, these are all considered unique enchants and can't be combined. However, in 1.14, Il Mango discovered a bug where you could combine all the enchants. So in theory, we could get a chest plate with all of the enchants on it at the same time. To do that, we're gonna need tons of levels to combine all the books. So let's grab some of our basic supplies and head to the gold farm. Yo, what is that? Does this thing have like loot or something? What is your purpose? Use mouse cursor or tab button to select element. Was that you? Now I think the gold farm is somewhere around here, up these paths. But I could also be lost and going in a completely wrong direction. <gasps> oh, my children are still here. I may or may not have given them items so that they don't despawn and are doomed to live out the rest of their lives in this box. <clears throat> All right, now I don't have a good way to like start this machine. Um, so I'll do what I like to call the hit and then run for your life. Works every time. Scorpion dash fifty one dash zero seven back. He's dead and now I think he's hunting me. I did nothing. And now we just gotta sit here and swing for a few hours. All the AFK footage is linked below so people like Jamil can see why my XP changes. 300 levels should be enough, but now we need the actual books so we can combine them into the greatest armor set. Which means we need slaves. But apparently these slaves require some sort of payment, so we need to grab a bit of iron from the ethical iron farm. How does a creeper always manage to get himself stuck in there? And then using our totally fair trading system that we definitely didn't torture this villager to get, we can trade one iron for one emerald. And now we can go and colonize the native population. <laughs> Was ready for colonization. Ah. Get in the boat. Why are we stuck? Use mouse cursor Shut up. Or <laughs> Shut up. To select elements. How do I turn this off? Press left shift no. to dismount. Press left shift Shut to dismount. Up. This drown won't leave me alone. Press left shift to no, dismount. No, I don't want to dismount. It's done. And I'm still sane. I even captured a child. Now, since each librarian trades their books at equal probabilities, we have about a 1 in 148 chance of getting the level and book that we want. And since we need four different kinds of books, that will take... 
took over an hour. Uh, the footage is in the description if you want to see all the pain. But with that out of the way, now we can prep to actually enchant the armor and become one-third immortal. First, we need to combine all the level 2 books that we got into level 4, and then sort everything into shulkers. Alright, so this is all the enchants we want for all the different armor types. But this is where everything gets a little bit technical. If I screw anything up, I could lose all the books, or even worse, the entire world. First, we need to go into the nether, get to the roof, and climb back to 300 levels since we need all of them to pull this off. But don't worry, Jamil, all the footage is in the description. Now, we fly thousands of blocks away. This is because for every block we fly, it's 8 blocks of travel in the overworld, and since we're backporting versions, we don't want to risk corrupting chunks that we've already built in. This is probably far enough, so now we need to get back into the overworld. But before we go, we have to leave any items in the nether that wouldn't have been there in 1.9, like netherite armor. Alright, now that we're here, we travel to the center of a chunk. I'm gonna take this cherry log with us to show you what happens to items that can't be brought back to previous versions. Then, we start our game in 1.9. Now, if you're intelligent, you should probably make a backup here. But, eh, I have faith in myself. Great. It spawned us in the middle of an ocean. Oh no. What? Where are my shulkers? I'm gonna have to go get all the armor again, aren't I? Oh, uh... Alright, we're back. Nothing happened. But this time, we're gonna leave our shulkers on top of the nether roof, and since the nether roof won't be loaded when we're in the overworld, they should stay close by for when we update to other versions. Now, since we're going to 1.9, I can't actually bring any of the enchanted books back, period, because for some reason, if I do, they all get turned into Protection 1 books. So to get all the books that we want, we're gonna need to find all the enchants actually in 1.9. Okay, so remove my bed, so the first thing we need to do is kill some sheep. Now we need to find an area to set up the enchanting table. I didn't bring lapis. Oh! You know, I'm gonna be fighting a thousand of these guys soon. This game hates me! Why doesn't it want to give me level 30? I see, somehow this grass has impeded the bookshelf. Now, 1.9 is the update that lets us get Mending and Infinity on our bow, so I'm hoping for as many enchants here as possible, but what I'm really looking for is Infinity. Wow, okay. That's nearly a god bow. Now, trading with villagers worked a bit differently in 1.9, so our best way to get mending will be fishing. We want Luck of the Sea 3 on this rod, because it'll give us the best chance on getting treasure loot. Not a great chance, but at least a better chance than just using a basic rod. And now we just need to design a simple auto fisher for 1.9, and we just sit here till we get the book. Hello there. Alright, and now we can add it to our bow. Man, this looks so cursed. Alright, with that out of the way, the real fun begins. But first, we need to hop back into 1.20 and put this bow away, because I'm definitely gonna lose it. Alright, now we can take all of our armor enchants back to 1.14, but for some reason I can't take shulkers back to 1.14, so I need to fill up my inventory with all the books. Now, since I have, like, no slots left, all I can take back is, like, a couple more things, but this should be fine. Alright, so first things first, we need wood to get the bookshelves. And once again, we need lapis. And we have no pickaxe. Okay, now that we're ready to make our armor, we need to take full advantage of Minecraft's enchanting system. You see, if I were just to add all the books willy-nilly to my armor, I'd quickly run out of levels. But if we do enchanting properly, we should end off with roughly five levels to spare. So let's cross our fingers we don't make one mistake. First, we enchant a piece of armor, hoping to get as many enchants on it as possible. Oh man, that <laughs> that's sick, but also really weird looking. We need to put these books and armor through the anvil the least amount of times possible. So, if we combine these two, this book now has a value of two anvil uses. Now, since I'm only adding one more book, the order here doesn't really matter, since both my boots and the book only have an armor use of one. But for my leggings, we need all four books. So we'll combine these two, and then we'll combine these two. Now each of these two books has an anvil use of two. If I were to combine the two books, they'd have an anvil use of three. Yep. Don't ask me why. This stuff makes no sense. What is this equation, you might ask? I don't know, but anyway. Which would be like 30 levels to combine with my leggings. But if I combine them one by one, it only amounts to 24 levels. Now at this point, we probably did my math right, and we have enough levels for the rest of this. Woo, five levels left, and we nearly have a god set of armor. And then we just need to go to 1.20 and upgrade it to netherite. Right. We, uh... We need the templates. Um, woo, piece of candy. But we're not done yet. We still have to get the 1.20 enchants. 
Oh. Huh. That's weird. Okay, so apparently I lost all my achievements that didn't exist in 1.9. Fun. This is very broken, but now it's time to test it out versus 1,000 mobs. <laughs> I'm sure this will go fine. The first thing we need is cobblestone. Huh. It's a little weird. Where's... Where's the Coliseum? Am I... Yeah, uh, I'm at the right location. <sighs> Did I break the world again? Spawn chunks always remain loaded even if the player isn't there. So that would mean if I went to 1.9 and the spawn chunks were still loaded, they got reset. Oh, ew. that's literally an entire video gone. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh. Well, I guess we can cry about that later. Um, we need cobblestone. Now we just need to construct a simple mob farm and have all the mobs that spawn drop into this chute and then they just go through this portal. We can construct a small containment center on the other side of the obsidian and voila! A place to die. Now all we have to do is AFK here for a while and it should fill up with mobs. The easiest way to check how many that there are is to go through a different portal here and hit F3. This way we can see how many entities are nearby. So we still have a ways to go. 1,090 mobs. This is really stupid. Okay, um, that all should be good. Sort out. <laughs> I'm actually so nervous. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> here we go. I, I have no idea what to expect. Okay, let's just do it. <laughs> this is this is gonna go so poorly. Here we go. Here we go! Oh, there's so many mobs! Oh my goodness! Oh, so I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Oh, oh, oh. Wait, are we okay? Uh, oh, oh, I don't know. Words. Words? I'm a YouTuber! Okay, I don't know! Three hearts! Three hearts! Oh, 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 oh. oh out of the way! Oh, the spiders they all left. I should have thought about that, but. I think most of everything stayed in. I have never seen anything like that in my life. That was chill. Oh, there's a music disc on the crap. Oh my god. Okay, I should I should heal up. I should not die the last mobs in here. Okay, uh, I'll take the music disc. There's so many mob drops. Um, there's like listen, there's a thousand ninety mobs. There's definitely not ninety spiders. So I just I'm just gonna gonna leave them there and go back. Ooh. Okay, everything's fine. We survived. Ooh, okay. Now, there's no way I can survive a hundred withers with this armor, so we need to get a lot stronger. And to do that, we need infinite potion effects. But, to explain how we pull that off, it's easier if we just collect the potions first. I've come up with a list of the potions that I want to have the permanent effects for, so now we just need to collect the resources. Hmm, I wonder if any of the villagers trade for potions. Uh, oh, look at that! A shulker with all the stuff I need. How convenient! I definitely didn't spend the last 30 minutes gathering resources to set that up. Alright, now that we have all the resources, it's time to brew. I have officially met the saddest skeleton of all time. It's been trying to shoot me for like five minutes. I just can't do it. And now that they're all in splash form, we need to head to the nether. Here we can construct a timing machine. Then we swap back to snapshot 23w05a. This is a 1.20 snapshot, and this is where the magic happens. Alright, so if I put the longer version of the potion in this dispenser, and then put the shorter but more powerful here, and then we hit this button, it should... Yes! 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 Okay, so it worked. This is because the timer on the longer potion gets paused when we get splashed with the more powerful, shorter version. Then, as the more powerful version runs out, the first one begins to tick down again. But at the last second, a new more powerful version was splashed on me. But since it did it at zero seconds left in the less powerful one, the less powerful one kept on counting into negatives and reached negative one, causing it to give me infinite speed one. Now, if that didn't make any sense, I can't explain it any better. However, even though now that we have all these effects, we have one major issue, the Turtle Master Potion. This is the most important one of them all because it gives you resistance three. However, it comes the debuff of slowness four. But there's a way to get around this. As the potion's timers are ticking down, all you have to do is splash in another slowness 4 potion on yourself, which will avoid it going to negative 1. And then we get infinite resistance 3. And at this point, we're pretty much freaking immortal. Well, maybe. We'll find out. But to find out, we need like 300 wither heads to make 100 withers or so, and since this video is about fighting, not collecting mobs, we got them. You can watch me kill them in the description if you care. Half of it was a live stream and half of it was something else. But now, we are ready. I built this contraption to make them all spawn at once. Each dispenser is loaded with a head, and when I flick these two levers, every wither will spawn. The floor has six layers of obsidian, and each wall has one layer, so in theory, they shouldn't get out before I can kill them. Or, 
they kill me. <sighs> it is time to release the withers. Okay, we hit this lever, then we just have to sprint over to this one and hit this lever. They should all be spawning. <sighs> Okay, let's get a good couple deep breaths. We got this. All right, here we go. Hit this side. I can't even look. I'm pretty sure they're spawning though. I definitely see them. And this side. Oh my freak. Okay, we go to the middle and we pray. Okay, oh, they're going for the piglets. They're not even coming for me. Okay, these bunch are coming for me. All right, this is the strap, boys. Oh, I didn't even... Oh, if my armor breaks. Okay, we're not taking any damage. We're good. Now, we only have one fear right now. If my armor breaks, I'm going to instantly die. So all I can hope is that all this damage... Oh, it's definitely going to break my armor. I need to kill some. If I kill some, I have mending. I have a chance at repairing it. But I'm, I need to move backwards constantly. I don't know if I'm going to get any of the... Exp oh, it's frozen. Oh, no. They're all going to lodge their skulls all at the same time at me. I did not think about the lag. Oh boy. I can't check my armor. If I check my armor and they bump me into somewhere, I am really screwed. Okay. Oh, I'm in a hole. I'm in a hole. I can't go too far down. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to hit them. Oh my, they're just pummeling me. Okay, this whole group has come onto the ground, which is not good because any block they come in contact with, they break. So they're just burrowing my way down to like nowhere right now. But as long as I keep moving, I should be okay. Oh, this is why we put a lot of layers of obsidian. Oh, they've already burrowed it. Okay. There's so many other stars on the ground. Oh, Oh my goodness. What? What what have you done? <laughs> Okay, they, they've all gotten themselves stuck, which I'm not gonna complain about. At this point, I was in less danger, and I was more worried about the pain of just trying to hit them. Nice little group hug. Oh, they've immediately knocked me down. Oh, that man just blew me 500 meters away. <laughs> Keep knocking me away. Stop it. Let me fight. Oh, I got a good group of them here. Getting so... Oh, come on. Okay, this is a bit ridiculous at this point. Okay. And how about everyone just calms down? Just for a minute. Oh, we're losing. We're losing them. That means... Ha! <laughs> oh, this man's really got himself stuck. The final wither. Let's see if we can get him down here to fight us. The final stand of 100 withers. Oh, well, that was disappointing. So disappointing, in fact, that I actually fought... Uh, excuse me. I'm in the middle of a YouTube video. So disappointing, in fact, that I actually fought those 100 withers twice. I live streamed the other one, so you can go check that one out. Or check the link in the description for the full fight of this. But with those withers out of the way, that means we've successfully... That means we've successfully completed challenge number two, which leaves only one challenge left. Fighting 50 wardens at the same time. This one, uh, I'm not so happy or excited about. What am I saying? I wasn't happy or excited about fighting 100 withers either. <laughs> oh, as a whole. The best way to fight 50 wardens is going to require tons, and I mean tons, of notch apples. And the best place to get those is, ironically, ancient cities. Since each chest has an 8.4% chance of spawning 1 to 2, this is our best bet. But since this video is about becoming immortal, not about looting ancient cities, I got all the apples. The 12 or so hours of live streaming collecting them all is in the description. But now it's time to set up the fight. Now, believe it or not, collecting 50 wardens isn't actually that easy. But I think I have a plan. First, we need to get to an ancient city. Oh. Careful. Oh no! Okay, so to pull this off, we need to clear some shriekers. Crap. This man is attempting to sniff me. I feel very uncomfortable. All right, so we've surrounded the Shrieker with wool, and now it's time to create the actual trap. Since Shriekers can spawn a ward in within an 11 by 11 by 13 area, all we need to do is build a hole, fill it with water, add a nether portal to the end, create a little area on the top of the nether roof to fight and collect them, and now we just need to run in, bait the warden to spawn, shoot him with an arrow, he'll run off, and collect on the other side. And now we just gotta do it 49 more times. Okay, now we're just missing one more thing. End crystals. If you thought I was gonna try and smack 50 wardens with a sword, you're actually a special person. Instead, I'm gonna blow them up and attempt not to blow me up in the process. Oh, what is this? A stack and a half of end crystals? You know the drill. The full footage is in the description. And now we can fight. We can put our whole world on the line and... Psych! First, we need to get more hearts, and that's why we got the notch apples. By loading Minecraft into 1.19 and eating a notch apple, then a normal apple and waiting two minutes, we get to keep six out of the eight absorption hearts permanently until we're damaged. So now we load up. That took like five hours. I was just sitting here doing nothing. Now, if you think this is overkill, I'm going to play you a demo of what happens if you try to fight 50 wardens with normal hearts. Did that look pretty? Even with all these hearts, I'm not sure we can survive, eh. Okay, 
We have our god armor. We have our infinite potion effects. And we have our hearts. Which means there's nothing I can do to procrastinate going in there any longer. Okay, actually, some of my armor's hurt. Let's... Let's try and get some XP to heal it up. I don't have a hoe, so um, just doing this manually. But I feel like we're gonna need every possible bit of damage we can get because these crystals are gonna shred my armor. All right, just the legs and the boots. Okay, just booties. All right, just, you know, whatever. We're going in. I can't procrastinate this any longer. It's time to face our doom. Oh, this feels like when you go on a roller coaster, that like feeling you get right when you're about to drop off the edge. In this case, I'm just going to lose the last six months of work. I die. Because either I'm going to blow myself up or they're going to blow me up. Okay. I have faith. All right, here we go. Okay, we need to try and time our hits. Oh, everyone needs to clump around me. Come on. Yes, there we go. That was a good hit. Uh, okay, where am I? Oh, they're all over here. Oh, no. Okay, my hearts and armor, everything is still here. Well, not really my hearts, but... Oh, okay, I need to be placing these smarter. If I run out of crystals, I am screwed. Oh, I see some dropping. Oh, there's no way we actually pull this off, right? There's no... Oh, oh, okay. I'm being eaten. Oh, oh no. Oh no, they're getting too close to me and I can't time the placement. I mean, I'm just spamming right now. What do you mean they're close? Oh, they're hitting me back. I didn't plan for that. I need to be closer. Okay, not that close. Oh, where are they? Where are they? Okay, there's a clump right here. Oh, my armor is completely gone. I'm gonna start taking a lot more. Oh, I'm out of crystals. No, I'm not. I was out of crystals. Oh, my health is getting so low. No. Wait, did we do it? Oh, that's so insane. But I haven't forgotten what I said I was gonna do at the start of the video. We're gonna fight a warden, buck naked. Since I'm probably about to lose my entire hardcore world, this is a great time to plug my next video. I'm hosting a giant Civilization Hunger Games event where you can join and fight for the glory of first place. If you're interested in joining, you can click the link in the description to join my Discord. I have no more Notch Apples. This is a really dumb idea. <laughs> ah, you're too scared to spawn. That's right, boy. Fear me. Fear this blade. I, I don't have it named, but I'll name it Igor. Igor the- Oh, you just ignored Igor. Okay. All right, that, that was our free quote-unquote hits. <laughs> He's gonna sonic boom me. I need to get out of the dark because I have no idea where I'm shooting. And I can't swift sneak because I have no leggings. So my only option is to just sprint. Where is he? Okay, there he is. Oh, he, he knows exactly where I am. It would help if I could hit a shot. Oh, he's gonna sonic boom me. One more shot. Oh, no. Oh, he got me. Okay, we're fine. We still have a few rows of hearts left. We just can't let him catch up to us. Otherwise, we're screwed. Okay, where is he? Oh, I should keep running. I should, I should just do what I just did and get distance. Get rid of the darkness effect. Not fall in that hole. Okay, and where is he? Oh, he's, he doesn't lost any scent of me. Oh, is he stuck there? I don't care. I'm fighting him naked. I can take advantage. Oh, he's no longer stuck. Oh, no, he's booming again. Oh, okay. He just took out like another half row of hearts. Oh, he's gonna take out another half row. Yeah. Oh, why am I trying to shoot? I have no idea where he is. That was a really dumb idea. Oh, he, oh, he boomed me again. Okay. I think we've got him to like half health. I'm hoping, crossing my fingers. Oh, this is a bad way to run. This. Oh, I'm, I'm running by shriekers. Oh, he hit me again. No. Okay, my plan's kind of falling apart right now, but I still have faith in my naked ability. Come on, keep landing. He's gonna boom me. I just had to take the boom. Okay, maybe if I don't run in a straight line, he won't be able to, like, sync up properly as I immediately run in a straight line. Oh, okay, there's no point in eating food because my base health hasn't been hurt yet. There we go. Oh, we're landing a lot of shots. I just have no idea how many it's... Oh, I can't avoid those. I have no idea how many shots he can take from the bow. Okay, let's let's dodge and weave, boys. Maybe we can use these to, like, get extra distance. Ah, oh, problem is I can't see. I don't want to risk it. Oh, get rid of that darkness. Okay, here he comes. Oh, man, I'm missing all the shots I need to hit. Oh, come on. How did I miss that? 